Good morning, morning, morning. Hope we're all well. Welcome to another trail. I'm out on the Pedders Way in Norfolk today, and this is a 46 mile trail. Uh, starts here in Nettishaw Heath in Suffolk, on the Suffolk Norfolk border. And, uh, and basically, I'm going to head in a straight line for 46 miles. Uh, might even be 47 miles actually, um, all the way up to Holm next to the sea, which is up on the on the coast. Been looking forward to doing this one for a while. Um, I arrived in Thetford, which is the the nearest kind of main town. I arrived last night after a very rainy three-hour car journey. Uh, kind of got myself sorted, got something to eat, Airbnb, etc. And up early this morning and taxi down to the start of the trail. So this is an ancient kind of Roman road that's been turned into, into a national trail here. In fact, some of my research suggests that it's even older than that and actually the Romans um, kind of repurposed it and took it over from sort of previous settlers um, here in East Anglia. But anyway, uh, enough waffling. Um, I'm not gonna try and set an amount of miles today. I mean, I've got a, I've got a rough amount in my head. Um, we'll see how we go. What I learned from the South Downs Way is um, you've got to kind of be flexible really and kind of not have it too fixed. I've got an idea where I want to wild camp. Um, I've got all the gear in the back here. And yeah, the aim is to do two, maybe three wild camps to get me through to the end of the trail. <laughs> So I'm a couple of miles in and as you can see these paths are seriously seriously overgrown with bracken um, so if you are going to do the pedders way uh, roughly this time of year you definitely need trekking poles to kind of find your way through the the jungle of Norfolk <laughs> jungle more jungle look at it that's the path that is the path honestly and then the path is somewhere in there somewhere yes yeah, so we've got this little waterway alongside uh, the trail here and uh, normally I'm really surprised the whole thing floods over onto this boardwalk and the whole kind of area that I've just done, uh, last kind of 200 meters, the whole thing is often submerged, I've noticed on um, other YouTubers' videos. Uh, so really fortunate, especially with the amount of uh, rain that we've had in the last few days in the Southeast, I guess it's just kind of skipped this area. Well, it's good news for me anyway. Okay, so you can um, see the problem here. This is the A11 bypass. Uh, it's the four mile point and I do remember someone else on their vlog pointing out that this was a bit dicey. Right, okay, here goes. Okay. Oh, halfway. And again.
We are at about mile six, just coming up to mile six now. And we've passed through our first village, which is the village of Stonebridge. and uh, I am having a well-earned sit-down uh, with a lunch of tuna wraps and skittles. <laughs> no expense spared. Uh, giving the feet a bit of an air. I've done about uh, nearly 11 miles, um, which I'm quite pleased with. I checked the map a minute ago and I'm actually further ahead up the trail than I thought I was. Um, I thought I was nearer a place called Thompson Water and I was looking to kind of stop there and have lunch but I just walked right past it and completely missed it. So yeah having a bit of a bit of a breather, resting the feet and then I'm just going to keep going. That's my aim. The trail has been dry, it's been completely flat, there have been no hills at all um, which has been quite useful. It can get a bit monotonous those of you that have done this one or thinking about doing it you're literally just walking straight 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 so it's almost impossible to get lost in theory Excuse me. <laughs> okay, I'm stopping for the day. Day one done. It's 6.40. Uh, I've spent the last half an hour walking around a woodland, just trying to find a suitable spot. Um, the good news is that this woodland and, uh, and a lot of other woodlands that I've passed on the Pedder's Way um, are quite accessible um, for nipping in for a little wild camp. Um, I'm really pleased because I spotted this place um, when I was doing my research over the last sort of few weeks and months and just had everything crossed that it was going to be accessible um, and it is and it's all right. It's a miracle. I've managed to pitch the Lanshan 2 Pro with its modifications in a dodgy woodland with ground that is so soft it's ridiculous um, so it's taken a bit of twiddling and fiddling but we got there so uh, let me show you around the shelter so here we go uh, Lanshan 2 Pro in khaki brown um, you've seen me use this in one or two videos now it's becoming my sort of summer tent of choice 
and my sort of hiking tent of choice, I suppose. Um, the more I pitch it, I think the better I get at it. <laughs> I think that's the idea anyway. Such a good view from inside, let me show you. So let's just go. Good thing about this tent, if you don't know, uh, double vestibule, got one here, and we've got one on the other side as well. Um, so at the moment I'm airing stinky socks and storing uh, water. Have a look inside. Ah, here we go. So luggage and sort of general bits over here. This is the Outkit cloud base, um, sort of thin kind of cross section summer sleep pads. And then I've got my decathlon helium pillow over the end there. Um, sleeping bags and my new sleeping bag, the Outkit what is it the pipe dream 400 is in there i haven't got it out just yet there was someone on youtube the other day who was saying about don't get your sleeping bag out straight away as soon as you pitch because of moisture so um and especially in this tent it's a single skin tent um so it can get condensation -y unless i'm ventilating it very very well which is what i'm doing at the moment uh talking of ventilation and views check this out over here this is why we do it look at that that is currently the view from my tent so i've been here about an hour at least maybe an hour and a half and i didn't see anyone at all until a couple walked past about 10 minutes ago so uh, and they i think they saw me and they saw my tent so yeah doesn't matter just completely ignored it actually actually let's go to the path and let's see what the uh, the tent looks like from the Pedders Way. Okay, so this is the Pedders Way. It's about eight o'clock now, and if I just pan around to here, my tent is over there in the middle. Um, you can probably see it because the front door's open at the moment, but that will be closed. So the color itself blends in reasonably well. I mean, yes, it is a bit obvious there's a tent in there, but it could be worse, couldn't it? Right, everyone, I'm knackered. It's coming up to 9.30 and uh, I'm just gonna crash now. So I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, gonna get into my new sleeping bag, which is quite exciting. Let you know what it's like in the morning. And I shall bid you good night. Good morning folks and welcome to day two of the Pedder's Way. I slept remarkably well last night in my new sleeping bag. Um, very comfy, um, warm. I kept one side of the tent open just to kind of get ventilation through um, and managed to avoid condensation completely, which is good. Um, in terms of that sleeping bag, my only slight criticism is that it's just slightly too short. I bought the regular, you can get a regular and you can get a long in the Outkit Pipe Dream 400. Um, I'm five foot eight uh, and I, I fit in it, but if I'm gonna be picky, I just love a little bit of extra room and I kind of wish I'd bought the long version, but hey ho, it's still okay, it's fine. But I slept well, I slept all the way through. 
as you can see, um, leaving no trace, um, just leaving the woods exactly as I found it. In fact, I'm taking a bit of rubbish out that someone else has left here. And I'm gonna go and get some breakfast. So about one and a half miles from here is um, a service station on the A47. Uh, and I'm gonna get some coffee and I'm gonna get some breakfast and I'm gonna see if I can refill my water bottles perhaps as well. And just gonna uh, get my map out, have a look and kind of make some loose plans for the day. Uh, would like to get a similar mileage in today if I can. Well, just goes to prove that if you don't ask, you don't get. Big thank you to that lady at McDonald's who refilled all of my water bottles, just like that. I had a f just this weird feeling that they wouldn't do it, you know, kind of strict hygiene and all that kind of thing. But yeah, I, I just started walking towards her with a few bottles and she said, you want those refilled, don't you? And uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, that was great. At about mile 26 and we've just arrived in a place called Castle Acre and you can probably just see behind me a fantastic ruin of an 11th century monastery absolutely love places like this it's um there's quite a lot of it left as well we'll see if we can um, get in a bit closer It's uh, quarter to one and just left Castle Acre about 10 minutes ago. Uh, it was a good opportunity just to kind of grab lunch and eat it as I go. So I did get more than the, than the chocolate ice cream. Um, so I grabbed a bit of extra stuff and um, means I can kind of sort of chomp and walk at the same time. Uh, yeah, need to keep going. Um, so camping tonight is going to be interesting. I've had a, an email back from a, from a church uh, that I've been in contact with about 15 miles from here and um, and I've been given permission to use their grounds to camp in tonight. Uh, it's been described as a bit undulating their ground so I don't know it might be doable it might not be but they do have a free water supply as well which is good it's about 15 miles from here um, so yeah I'm probably gonna sort of do another five miles take a break air the feet um, and then sort of do it like that, do five break, do another five break, because my feet are feeling quite hot and kind of uncomfortable today. Just to give you an idea how straight parts of this trail are, proper, Roman road <laughs> just goes on and on and on in a straight line. <laughs> Actually bumped into uh, a runner about an hour ago. He was uh, doing the 
pedal his way in the opposite direction to me. And uh, I mean, running it, amazing. I, I asked him about the whole road business and he said, you've got about 10 miles more of road, mate. Just found something to break up the excitement of the roads. We've got a trig point just over there. And this marks, I believe, the highest point on the Pedder's Way. Let's go and have a look. It's not in the best of Nick. <laughs> According to the map, we are the dizzying height of 92 meters above sea level. Uh, so we are around about mile 31, 30, 31 at the moment. And uh, we're still on the roads. So they are getting on my nerves. Really, it's just roads, roads, roads. Yeah. about 5.20 p.m. and I'm proper, proper bushed, really want to stop. Um, but I'm determined to, um, to push on to this um, little permissive camp that I've got at the church. So uh, it's just basically, a, it's just a bit of a slog really. <laughs> you, know, you, you look at it on the map and you think, oh, it'd be fine, but there's some really long kind of arduous, <laughs> sluggish stretches of this trail. Um, I mean, just looking at the map at the bit that I'm on now, it's just a continuous Roman road, straight line. I mean, perfectly straight, all the way to where I need to get to, it's about four miles. So you know you're not gonna get lost, so that's the, that's the plus, but uh, there's just a sort of, um, I think when you're doing the same thing, you're walking in the same direction, it kind of, it almost feels harder. Whereas if you've got variety and a few turns and, some difference it kind of breaks it up a little bit i don't know if that makes sense to any of you watching maybe get in the comments and let me know if you've experienced this uh, feeling of monotony <laughs> Yeah, so it's a bit of a tricky one, this, guys. Um, I mean, my contact here said it's fine to camp, but away from the graves. But everywhere I look, even this nice little sp space over here, there's two new graves. So it's... Um, <laughs> never done this before. We are pitched just here. It's not the... It's not the uh, the flattest part but it's the least steep <laughs> and um, and it's the area where there's least graves even though there's one right there yeah um, I think it'll be fine I mean the email that they sent me said just um, avoid close proximity to graves but when the the entire ground around the church is full of gravestones it's a little bit of a challenge anyway got the land shan up um, in good time because it started raining so you might, might be able to hear um, I've just put my gear under there just for the moment I'll unpack that in a second um, and also I'm gonna keep this side closed because I don't really want to be having a view of the graveyard whilst I'm cooking my uh, chicken and rice tonight um, so I'm gonna open that side over there um, because there's not a lot of graves that I need to kind of look at. Uh, just personal preference. I'm, I'm trying to be as respectful as possible um, I, and just a just good people reassurance. You know, I, I have got express permission from the curate of this church. I'm not going to name the church, um, just, 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 just out of respect for them. 
Um, so if you do know the church, please can ask you not to drop the name into the comments. Um, and yeah, it's just a, just a nice act of kindness on their behalf. Um, I just explained the situation and that I was struggling a little bit and I just needed, needed a guaranteed place I could put my tent up and they were only too obliging. So a big thank you to this church. Just going into the porch area of the church because I was told, oh, there we are. They've provided a, a water cooler for passers by, travellers, which is fantastic. Ambient cooled. Oh, wow, it just gets better and better. We're all pitched up, we've got a water supply, and I'm not going to get moved on. Um, on to dinner and I'm about to do another summit to eat. I had one, one of these last night. This one's the chicken fajita with rice. Um, I have had it before. It's okay, it's not the best one they do, but it's, it's, it's not too bad and I'm really hungry and that's gonna give me a fair few calories, which is handy. And talking of calories, Snickers Duo. Nine o'clock. Can't believe it's nine o'clock. I'll tell you what. I think even even if this was made of cardboard, I'd still eat it. I'm so hungry. All right, time for bed. Um, have dinner. It is a bit creepy out there. I'm not going to lie. It is a bit creepy. Um, but I'm all right. I'm okay. It's all fine. I'm, I'm really pleased with the distance that I covered today. So you've got 19 miles done. So we're up to 39 miles done now since yesterday morning, um, which I'm really pleased at. So 20 yesterday, 19 today um, has been a bit of a slog today. I think I found today harder than yesterday. Um, there's been some really sort of magic moments. You know, there was that moment um, when the deer saw me and was running across the field and when I got to, when I got to Castle Acre and I got to the ford the water going across the road and um you know just yes it's a beautiful part of the world you know it's it's a lovely county Norfolk I think the the challenge for me has been the the lack of change in terms of the actual trail itself so just walking today in even more of a straight line than I did yesterday. I mean, yesterday it sort of like slightly sort of changed a bit, went off here, went off there. And, you know, but today was just like 10, 15 miles of just continuous, like either road, 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 or down a track that just doesn't, doesn't change all the time. So there's that sort of sense of you're not really getting anywhere if, even though you are so with the south downs way you kind of you know you'd you'd walk up a hill and down it done job done and you sort of feel good about that or you know you uh, walk to a village done walk to the next village done so it's like kind of like those sections of achievement um and it kind of plays with your head a little bit so this with the with the pedders way so you're kind of like you're just walking 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 and you just it's part of your brain going i haven't got anywhere <laughs> even though i have um, but anyway, yeah, that, that's just my major sort of takeaway from it. Um, but seven miles tomorrow, so I've only got seven miles to go, so that's, that's great. Anyway, enough of all that. I'm going to say goodnight from the graveyard, and I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> night, night.
Well, that was a quick getaway. <laughs> Morning all. Uh, it's around 6.30 at the moment. Um, decided to get up quite early. Two reasons, really. Um, first one was I didn't really want to draw attention to myself. Any, any early morning graveyard visitors? I wasn't expecting any, but you know what I mean? And also, this rain. So when I woke up about 5.30, there was a bit of a shower. Um, then it kind of died off. And then the forecast says that this part of Norfolk's going to get really quite heavy rain from around now <laughs> until lunchtime. So it looks like I've got a pretty wet morning ahead. So uh, took advantage of this um, church porch. Threw all the gear in here, went back. Uh, just before the rain came, timed it perfectly actually, just gave the tent a bit of a wipe down, get the worst off, stuffed it in a stuff sack, threw it in here and, um, and I'm just, I'm just going to just stay here for a bit, just kind of sort my gear out, repack things, um, might even, might even get a brew on, you know. Right, I think we're good to go. I'll tell you something, I needed that coffee. <laughs> so day three of the Pedder's Way and we're now on mile 40. And it's 46 miles in total. So that's quite a nice short morning, I think. A short morning of hiking. However, it is raining. Um, it's gonna stay this way until about lunchtime, according to the weather app. Um, so as you can see, I've got all my waterproofs on, tops and bottoms. Um, rucksack, I've um, just taken a few things that are in the stretchy pocket on the outside and put them into my waterproof inner on the inside of the rucksack and just kind of really sort of carefully pat things away and put the, um, the rucksack rain cover over the top as well. Right, let's do it. Back on the Pedder's Way. And after two pretty dry days, and quite warm days, I feel like nature's getting its own back on me today. So the consolation is that it's only, only six miles. Much needed black coffee, a few snacks down there. Um, yeah, lovely find, lovely find. So it's the, it's called the General Store. It's in Ringstead. Um, it's on the kind of main high street, which is actually the, the actual Pedder's Way. Uh, the manager claims to be the only shop actually on the Pedder's Way. Um, so yeah, he says it's about a mile and a half now from the end, from Holm. Which is uh, which is a good feeling. The other thing he said was, "I've been lucky with the rain." I, I don't I, I don't know if I have been lucky, but he said that all oh, the storms coming. He said there's meant to be a storm coming from the south. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to finish these snacks off, get myself up to home, and uh, see whether I can shelter somewhere before I think about how I get 
back to Thetford, which is where my, my car is parked. And I can see the sea. That's, <laughs> that's a good feeling. We did it. <laughs> oh, it's a good feeling. So I'm not going to lie, um, it has been um, a bit of a slog in, in parts, um, but you know, it feels, it feels good once you get through that and it feels really good to get to the end. Um, you know, it's 46 miles. It is one of the, probably one of the shortest national trails, um, but you know, it's not, it's not a walk in the park by, by any means. Um, so yeah, I recommend it, give it a go. Uh, I'm just, Looking forward to just getting some dry socks on and um, maybe going and sitting in a pub somewhere. So I've now got to work out how to get out of this part of the world uh, to, to return to where I'm, where I'm parked, all the way back at the beginning of the trail. Uh, so um, I'm going to sign off here. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, if you like sort of watching sort of through hikes, long distance hiking in this kind of form, you might want to consider subscribing. Uh, and then hitting the bell and of course um, if you do that you get notifications of when I upload future adventures so thank you very much for watching thanks for sticking with me take care of yourselves get out there do some hiking and I shall see you on the next one